Hello and welcome to another Ableton Not video tutorial. Today's video is for the DJs out there and it's going to cover how to warp tracks efficiently and precisely. So for this video we're going to use the track Hurry Slow, an original track by yours truly, and I've loaded it into a new live set. Live's default tempo is set to 120 BPM and we're going to leave that alone for now. So we hit the warp button and you will notice that Live puts a transient warp marker at the very beginning of the audio file. So let's listen to the beginning of the track and locate the first downbeat or beat 1. Usually this is a kick drum. Sometimes tracks start with something other than a kick drum, like a clap, or something that's actually on beat 2, not beat 1. So again, just make sure you double check that the first transient that we find is the kick drum. So once you've found that transient, we're going to zoom way in. And then you're going to follow the waveform back until it looks like the audio material levels out and settles in the zero crossing. Once you've found that zero point, right click with your cursor in the top half of Live's sample display view and select Insert Warp Marker. Or you can use the shortcut Apple I. Once the warp marker is in place, right click on the yellow flag and select Set 1.1.1 here. Now we'll need to zoom back out, and we're going to delete the initial warp marker that Live put at the beginning of the audio file. Once you've got 1.1.1 set, then right click on the flag again, and select warp from here. Next thing you need to do is check out the segment BPM and look for any weird decimals. Most people write their tracks to whole integer BPMs, and I know that this track is at 127, and it says here 126.99. So you can go ahead and round that to the nearest whole integer. So let's fix that real quick. If you take a look at the clip options, you'll notice that Live's default clip settings has the fade parameter engaged. And what this does is place a volume fade at the beginning and the end of each clip to prevent any clicks and pops. But when you set the transient markers this precisely, sometimes the fade chops off a bit of the first transient. So I recommend turning this option off. Pops at the beginning of clips are caused when the clip start position is at a non-zero point, so either in the middle of a transient or in the middle of some other audio material. But as long as the warp marker and the clip start position are set to a zero crossing point, then there won't be any clicks or pops, so no need for the fades. Alright, let's get the metronome going and see where we are. Okay, sounds good up front. Now let's jump to the end and check the timing. And sounds pretty solid. Alright, now you want to find the last transient of the track. This track ends on beat 1, so that's fine. We're going to zoom way in, just as we did at the beginning, and check to see that it's crossing the bar line at a zero point. And just so the track is anchored to the grid and fully warped, let's go ahead and add a warp marker here as well. Next thing you'll want to do is check your warping algorithm, and make sure it's set to Complex Pro. This is the best sounding warp mode in my opinion. I've heard some people argue that Repitch offers the least amount of artifacts, but remember that if you play the track at any tempo other than the original tempo, it will alter the pitch of the track, which is not good if you're trying to mix harmonically from track to track. So if your computer can handle the CPU load, then I recommend using Complex Pro. Otherwise, complex is the next best option. Once we have our track fully warped and anchored to the timeline, the next thing I like to do is use warp markers to help map out the arrangement of the track. So let's listen through the track from the beginning to the end and place warp markers at the beginning of each new section. Alright, let's start from the top. And we don't need our metronome anymore. And it looks like the first nine bars is straight percussion, so let's skip ahead. Alright, still pretty much a drum intro, so let's see if we can find where the first bass line drops. Okay, so it looks like we have a little breakdown before we get to the first bass line. So I'm going to go ahead and put a warp marker there. Alright, and remember, since the track is already warped and already on the timeline, then to insert a warp marker, all you have to do is just select the bar line and hit Apple I. 
and that way you don't have to worry about accidentally fudging the time around by trying to double click a warp marker in. So let's see what happens after this break. Alright, there's our base, so we'll put a warp marker there. Okay, let's zoom out and see what we got. And here's a slightly different section with the vocals coming in. Maybe we'll put a warp marker there. And this is all pretty much the same. Just got a steady groove going. So let's jump ahead. Okay, and here we have our first major deviation from the groove. A little breakdown. So let's put a warp marker there. Alright, there's the drop. Okay, skip ahead a little more. And here we have another big breakdown. Okay, and there's our drop. Okay, and this all looks to be the same kind of groove. Alright, so we probably won't have anything before the outro drums, so let's skip ahead to where the beginning of the outro drums start and put a warp marker there. Okay, and I always like to set my loop bracket at the end of the track to make sure that track doesn't cut out on me. Alright, let's give that a listen. Perhaps if you want a little bit lighter of a drum outro, maybe you don't want that vocal at the beginning, you can just take the last four bars instead of the last eight. Alright, see that's a little bit more stripped down, and it will be very easy to mix in and out of. Okay, let's zoom all the way back out. And now you can see that we've got our clip warped. We've got it set to complex pro mode. We've turned our clip fades off. And even zoomed all the way out to where you can see the full track. You have the nice warp marker flags letting us know where each new section is starting. So it'll be really easy to follow along. Alright, that wraps it up for this video. Be sure to tune in for the next video where we'll talk about how to add cue points using different clips. And we'll also cover how to label your tracks and to keep your digital DJ crate nice and organized using Ableton Live's library. As always, thank you for choosing Ableton Out. We'll see you next time.